Many of Melbourne's legends lay buried at the Melbourne General Cemetery at Parkville. There are about 300,000 burials in the cemetery. The cemetery has a substantial number of notable interments including Governor Sir Charles Hotham, the ill-fated explorers Burke and Wills, and well-known pioneers, such as John Pascoe Faulkner and George Evans. Among them lies an Aboriginal tribal leader, and his name is Derrimut. A traitor for his clan and a hero for the European settlers of Melbourne. Here begins the story of Derrimut. When the European settlers first arrived in Melbourne in 1835, different Aboriginal clans occupied the area. Each clan had a clan head or Arweet. The clan head usually nominates his successor towards the end of his life. For the Alukat Willem clan the position of Arweet was shared between two young men named Derrimut and Benbow. The story of Derrimut is also the story of the survival of the early white settlers of Melbourne. For most, Derrimut is still an enigma. Is he a saviour or a traitor? The kindness Derrimut showed towards the new settlers proved to be his and his tribe's undoing. On Friday, the 29th of April 1864, The Age published from Melbourne carried a rather unimportant news in one of its inside pages, which read as follows. The old chief Derrimut died at the Melbourne Benevolent Asylum on Wednesday last. Derrimut was the last chief of those tribes of Aborigines who were encamped in the neighbourhood of the Yarra when Mr Faulkner and the first settlers arrived here. It will be remembered that Derrimut saved the first settlers from being massacred by the blacks as he gave them timely warning of the attack. Derrimut, the traitor who entered the history books of Australia for working against the best interests of his own tribe, died a pathetic death, after a long and equally pathetic life. But that was not the first time he was mentioned in Australian newspapers. On the 17th of October 1862, the aged carried a one-liner mentioning his name among the drunkards. Drunkards. Derrimut, an Aborigine was discharged. Two years after this incident, the man who should have been the chief of a tribe was picked up in a helpless condition at Brighton, crippled with rheumatism. Derrimut left his own creed for the friendship of the white settlers and became a degenerate hanger-on around the outskirts of Melbourne for most of the rest of his life. Derrimut belonged to the Yalukat Willem clan and the meaning of his name is believed to be pursue or hunt denoting the two most cherished qualities for an Aboriginal. Yalukat Willem clan was associated with the coastal land which spread from Port Phillip Bay to the Werribee River. But in 1835, the Aboriginal landscape was about to face the winds of change. On the 15th of August 1835, Enterprise, a schooner owned by John Pascoe Faulkner, entered the Yarra River. On the 30th of August, the settlers disembarked near where William Street now stands. John Faulkner was not one of the passengers, as he was prevented by his creditors at the last moment from boarding the schooner. He arrived on the 16th of October 1835, on the second trip of the Enterprise. When Faulkner arrived in Melbourne, he found an assemblage of around 300 of the Aborigines, drawn from adjacent areas like Goulburn River, Geelong and the Barrabool Hill, stationed near where a new weather-boarded house was built for him and his dependents. The tribesmen planned to murder the settlers by tomahawking them, but the settlers did not suspect anything, as the natives inhabited near the Yarra area were in friendly terms with them. The settlers offered them biscuits, potatoes and other presents, brought specifically for them. The arms of all sorts were left on board the schooner, with the women and children, which would have given ample time for the natives to strike before the settlers could get hold of the weapons to defend themselves. Two natives, Bait Banger and Derrimut, formed a friendship with Faulkner's servant, a youth named William Watkins. On the 28th of October 1835, the day began as usual for the settlers, putting all their efforts to finish the work on Faulkner's house. The local tribe was happy to allow the settlers build their houses for the gifts they already received and the anticipation of receiving more. The tribes from surrounding areas, who have not been shared the bounty, watched with growing cupidity 
and resolved to attack and kill all the settlers in order to possess themselves of their goods. It would have been an easy walk over for the natives with their overpowering numbers against the unarmed settlers. Deremit came running to William Watkins to inform about the impending attack. Initially they could not understand anything due to the language barrier. William Buckley, the white men who lived with the Yarra tribe for 32 years were called in to translate, and it became known that Aborigines had agreed to murder all the white people by getting two or more of their fighting men alongside each of the settlers. The natives were armed with stone tomahawks, hidden under their skin rugs and each one had a spear with them, or hidden in the long grass near the hut, and were dragging it along with their toes. When they saw Deremit passing the information, they unsuccessfully threw a few spears at him. The Aborigines, then clustered together in two lots, some hundred yards from the settlers, believed to be holding a council of war. Faulkner at once called his men and quietly armed them. He loaded one of his muskets with buckshot and fired into the head of the tree under which the natives assembled. When they heard the sound and saw pieces of wood falling on their heads, they ran away with loud cries. Faulkner and Henry Batman made William Buckley, the man who lived with Aborigines for 32 years, to tell the natives to leave the place and cross the Yarra to the other side. Loaded the natives in their boats and transported them across the Yarra as the settlers stood armed. The settlers destroyed all the bark canoes they could find so that the Aborigines won't return. Out of gratitude they gave Deremit clothes and food. If Deremit did not turn an informant, the white settlement in Melbourne would have been delayed at least for some years. It was the duty of the natives to protect their land, irrespective of the uncertain outcome of an attack against the settlers. Since then, for quite some time, Deremit was closely associated with Faulkner. He often went hunting and fishing with Faulkner, and with other Aborigines formed a crew for Faulkner's boat. Another two times, Deremit saved the settlers from an impending attack by giving them early warning. Deremit accompanied Faulkner to Van Diemen's land in August 1836, and was presented to Governor Arthur. Arthur presented Deremit with a drummer's uniform. Deremit's first wife was abducted by sealers at Point Nepean in 1833, and was taken to permanent sealing camps on one of the base Strait Islands. In October 1845, Deremit had a companion named Mewara, a Watha wearing tribal woman. Deremit suffered from many ailments, and was treated at the Melbourne Hospital in 1863 and 1864 for partial blindness and paralysed arm. In January 1864, Deremit was the subject of a report into his mistreatment by two nurses. Deremit was moved to the Benevolent Asylum in North Melbourne in March 1864. John Faulkner visited Deremit the day before he died. Deremit died on the 26th of April 1864, at the age of 54. But the date on his tombstone at Melbourne General Cemetery is the 28th of May 1864. In Deremit's honour, his name was given to the parish of Deremit, part of Werribee Plains, and a minor rise was given the name, Mount Deremit. The suburb of Deremit was detached from Deer Park in 1998.